Hello everyone. Welcome to a new session in hematology. Today we are going to discuss about an another a nutritional deficiency anemia that is megaloblastic anemia. A 32 year old male who is a strict vegan comes with chief complaints of hyperpigmentation over the knuckles, numbness over the palms and soles, and on examination red beefy tongue was found. What is your probable diagnosis? Briefly explain the etiopathogenesis, peripheral smear, bone marrow findings and differential diagnosis. At the end of this lecture, you will be able to answer all these questions. First, let us see how I am approaching this question. See, the key word is strict vegan. Am I right? This is the key word here. Strict vegetarians, that means pure vegetarians, they are more susceptible to get vitamin B12 deficiency because vitamin B12 is exclusively found in what? Meat. Am I right? That is, it is not present in the food that the strict vegetarians usually consume. So, vitamin B12 deficiency is one of the most common cause of megaloblastic anemia. See, what are the presenting features? Clinical presentation, hyperpigmentation. Then over the knuckles, then numbness. Numbness is because of, because of, see vitamin B12 and folic acid are very important for the myelination of the nerve fibers because of the involvement of the dorsal column pathway, dorsal column pathway of the spinal cord, dorsal coronal pathway of the spinal cord. The patient will have symptoms of like what? Altered sensation. Okay. That is sensory deficit over the extremities. And examination red beefy tongue was found okay that means uh, it will be reddish and it looks like a flesh of a beef okay that is so all these points will hyperpigmentation numbness red beefy tongue no doubt it is uh, the diagnosis is megaloblastic anemia before going to megaloblastic anemia remember what is actually the problem in megaloblastic anemia the major defect in megaloblastic anemia is that ineffective erythropoiesis Marrow is hypercellular because already the erythropoiesis is less known. So what will happen? The bone marrow will try to compensate by producing more cells. So marrow is hypercellular, but the reticulocyte count is low. I told you know, and all the deficiency anemia, reticulocyte count will be very low. Fine. Yes. So this is the most important point you have to remember. Fine. Yes. And remember, remember, in megaloblastic anemia, you have some features of hemolytic anemia. Why that happens? Okay, that point is very, very important because the late erythroblast in the marrow, no, it will undergo death. Why it undergoes this? Because the vitamin B1 and B12, this is very important, okay, for the DNA and RNA synthesis and the maturation. So the problem in megaloblastic anemia is that there is a defect in the maturation. So since the, there is a defect in the maturation, this immature erythroblast, that is the late erythroblast they undergo death and this and so this uh, because of the intramedullary death of this immature precursors of rbc results in the hemolytic component of the anemia this megaloblastic anemia see that megaloblast is because in bone marrow we will have megaloblast fine yes at last i will tell what are the differential diagnosis that means the RBC, see, see in uh, megaloblast is what we see in bone marrow. What we see in peripheral smear is macrocytes. Am I right? Yes. So we have some condition called this macrocytic normoblastic or like a what to say non-megaloblastic anemia. That means there won't be any megaloblast in the bone marrow, but still the RBC appears like macrocytes. I will tell that that is actually the differential diagnosis for megaloblastic anemia that we will discuss at last. We have two important deficiency because of which, okay, yes. So just remember what is megaloblastosis, I told you. What is megaloblastoid? It is nothing else but the term which is applied for uh, this marginal megaloblastic alteration. Not that much in, uh, important, just I explain. Megaloblastoid means megaloblast-like, that's it. So we have two important nutritional deficiency that causes megaloblastic anemia. One is what we call folic acid deficiency and another one is what we call it as uh, vitamin b12 deficiency so the folic acid as you know it is mainly found in the fruits and vegetables and it will be destroyed by heating okay yes so folic acid deficiency is also one of the causes for what 
our um, ah, megaloblastic anemia. See, now let us see about the absorption and transport of folic acid. See, the polyglutamates in the diet, okay, it will be converted into dihydrofolic acid, then into tetrahydrofolic acid, methyl tetrahydrofolic acid. Remember, the site of absorption of folic acid is in the proximal jejunum. And from there, it is observed into the plasma, okay, in the form of N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, and it is transported by folate-binding carrier protein, which will enter the cell, which will further undergo methylation to form N5-methyl tetrahydrofolic acid, and this N5-methyl tetrahydrofolic acid is responsible for DNA synthesis. So, just remember this, the basic, uh, what to say, functions, transport, and absorption of the folic acid. Then, we have something called as vitamin B12. I told you, you know, they are mainly present in meat and meat products, am I right? Yes. And remember, this vitamin B12 deficiency does not occur suddenly. Why? Because liver is the major site for storage of vitamin B12. Okay, what is that? Liver is the major site for storage of vitamin B12. And remember, this deficiency will manifest only for more than three years of insufficiency. For example, I am not taking vitamin B12 rich foods for around four to five years. Then only I will have the clinical manifestations. Fine? Yes. So what are the etiology of megaloblastic anemia? They will ask vitamin B12, folic acid deficiency. Okay, sometimes in perineal anemia. Pernicious anemia is like an autoimmune disease, whereas the autoantibodies are produced against the castle syndrome factor. As you all know, the castle syndrome factor is responsible for uh, the absorption of the vitamin B12. What is castle syndrome factor? The vitamin B12 itself is called as the castle syndrome factor. As well as in case of myeloid dysplastic syndrome, just remember three important things as far as an undergraduate is concerned, vitamin B12 deficiency, folic acid deficiency and the pernicious anemia which is an autoimmune uh, anemia. Fine? Yes. Then, now let us see about the absorption of vitamin B12. This is one of the most frequently asked question in your viva. How is vitamin B12 being absorbed? So, we have food. From the food, the cobalamin, no, that is the vitamin B12 will be released. The first, this cobalamin, it will bind to some, uh, what we call it as a protein called as R binder. What is that called as R binder? R binder which is present in the stomach. It is nothing else but a glycoprotein which is present in the gastric juice. It is also present in the saliva. This R binder is commonly called as haptocorin. So just remember the from the food the cobalamin or the vitamin B12 will be released. This vitamin B12 will bind to what we call it as the haptocorin present in saliva and gastric juice. From there the cobalamin reaches the duodenum. You know that duodenum has alkaline environment because of the pancreatic juices. So this pancreatic juices alkaline environment causes the separation. So we have now, now what we call have vitamin B12, uh, haptocorin, I am writing HC. This is the complex. This is going to reach duodenum. In duodenum, we have the alkaline environment which will break, which will break this complex so that the cobalamin and the haptocorin will be separated. The haptocorin will be digested. Fine? Yes. And here, the intrinsic factor, no, which is secreted by the gastric parietal cells, which will reach the duodenum and now the cobalamin binds with the intrinsic factor. So, what is now the current uh, what situation? Now, currently, the cobalamin is bound with the intrinsic factor. Earlier, it was with the haptocorin. Haptocorin got digested in the duodenum. Now, cobalamin binds with the intrinsic factor which reaches the terminal ileum. Remember, terminal ileum is the site of absorption of vitamin B12. Proximal duodenum is the site of absorption of iron. Proximal jejunum is the site of absorption of vitamin B9 or folic acid. From these three, any one question you may get in MCQ. So, the cobalamin, we have the cobalamin intrinsic factor receptor complex which will be absorbed into the ileal epithelial cells. Again, there, the intrinsic factor will be destroyed. Okay. So, earlier, what was destroyed? Haptocorin destroyed, binds with intrinsic factor. Now, this intrinsic factor, vitamin B12 complex will be taken, absorbed into the what, ileal epithelial cells. There, intrinsic factor undergo digestion and now the cobalamin binds with what we call it as transcobalamin 2. And it is this transcobalamin 2 which will be taken, taking, which will be carrying the vitamin B12. I told you know where we have folate carrier protein similarly here we have transcobalamin they will ask you what is the tra carrier protein for vitamin b2 answer is transcobalamin transporting cobalamin just remember like that okay yes so what are the etiology i told you first is the vitamin b12 cobalamin deficiency vitamin b12 cobalamin deficiency that is one of the most important etiology of uh, megaloblastic anemia am i right yes so what are the causes of this vitamin b12 or cobalamin deficiency in case of pancreatic disorders in case of inflammatory bowel disease like or lymphoma in case of tropical sprue just remember these conditions see these are the etiology see vitamin b12 if you just remember this table itself you can write uh, as, many, as much as you want so, strict vegetarian diet. 
so any malabsorption like ileal resection inflammatory bowel syndrome okay fish tape bomb that is diphenobotrum latum okay diphenobotrum latum is the most important parasite which causes actually vitamin b12 deficiency like we have hook form for iron deficiency anemia tropical sprue crohn's disease pregnancy gastrectomy why gastrectomy because you know the stomach will be resected right so what happened there will be any intrinsic factor okay then pernicious anemia folic acid deficiency again mostly it is dietary deficiency alcoholics alcoholics know there will be decreased bioavailability for folic acid then again tropical sprue anti convulsants like sodium valproate causes folic acid deficiency that is why valproate is contraindicated in pregnancy because in pregnancy if the folic acid is decreased the what the baby which is born has very high risk of getting neural tube defect then myeloproliferative disorders and all and we have something called as drug induced yes, this must be this can be asked so which of the following are the drugs which may cause this um folate deficiency answer is hydroxyurea acyclovir 6 mercaptopurine azathioprine 5 fluorouracil cytosine arabinoside then sidovudine okay all these are anti retroviral drugs then fenformin and metformin then dihydrofolate reductase that is uh, what we call inhibitors called as para amino salicylic acid so all these drugs you have already learned in pharmacology so all these just remember this list of drugs they may ask you which of the following drugs does not cause folic acid deficiency or which of the following drugs cause folic acid deficiency then inborn aerosol metabolisms like defect folate vitamin b12 less hand syndrome okay all those things fine so i told you about gastrectomy okay transcobalamin 2 i told you what is the important function of uh, what to say transcobalamin yes what is the important function of transcobalamin i told you it is responsible for the carrier it is a carrier protein for vitamin b12 then dietary insufficiency folic acid drugs and chemicals i told you, you know, the most common drugs which causes folic acid deficiency just remember number one is hydantoin also called as phenytoin also called as phenytoin number two is valproic acid number three is methotrexate number four is trimethoprim sulfamethoxox uh, sulfamethoxazole and pyrimethamine okay and last only we have purine analogs and pyrimidine analogs or ribonucleotide reductors inhibitors which causes vitamin b12 deficiency but remember the common drug phenytoin anticonvulsant valproic acid anticonvulsant methotrexate chemotherapeutic trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole uh, no it is like <coughs> we are using for almost a parasitic infection mal anti malarial drugs they all have very high risk of getting vitamin b9 folic acid deficiency then increased folate demand i told you one the problem happens whenever there is a decreased intake or there will be an increased demand so increased demand occurs in case of pregnancy lactation in case of myeloproliferative neoplasm <coughs> Then myelodysplastic syndrome and HIV infection, then intestinal disorders, inflammatory bowel disease like ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, then non-tropical sprue, tropical sprue, okay, yes. So what are the metabolic functions of vitamin B12 and folic acid? Actually, what is this folic acid and B12 doing? So first is transfer of one carbon moieties. That is one of the most important function of vitamin B12. Am I right? Yes. Then B12 acts as a cofactor for the following conversion. This is very, very important. Homocysteine to methionine. n 5 methyl tetrahydrofolic acid to tetrahydrofolic acid. propionyl coa to succinyl coe methyl melanyl coe to succinyl coe okay yes this is a very very important point you have to remember see <coughs> homocysteine methionine tetrahydrofolic acid n5 uh, n5 n10 uh, methylene tetrahydrofolic acid so this is very very important for the dna synthesis am i right dna synthesis uh, when you uh, i hope you have uh, read in biochemistry the n5 that is the one carbon moiety and this <coughs> di and tetrahydrofolic acid forms a major role for uh, tetrahydrofolic acid as well as methyl cobalamin they are the three most important what to say substances or the cofactors uh, that mainly helps in dna synthesis okay then what else yes then folate trap okay uh, then folic acid is important in the synthesis of dna okay then fig glue i told you know very very important fig glue excretion okay fig glue means what the histidine is metabolized to form immunoglutamic acid am i right which will further combine with the tetrahydrofolic acid to form glutamate so whenever there is folic acid deficiency this fig glue won't be converted into glutamate and it will be excreted in the urine acid that is why fig glue that is form immunoglutamic acid excretion in urine is an indirect indication of folic acid deficiency now, once this is done, what is actually the pathophysiology of megaloblastic anemia? I told you, you know, the DNA synthesis is affected. Remember, only the DNA synthesis is affected. The RNA synthesis is not impaired. And because of this, what impairment of the DNA synthesis, the cells become immature. Okay, they will just grow in size, but they can't transform to form mature forms. That is why this result in what we call as megaloblast. Okay, megaloblast. Now, let us see what is the pathophysiology. See, I told you, you know, pathophysiology of megaloblastic anemia, they will give uh, as a sub-question in your yeah, long question. 
just remember this is the pathophysiology whenever there is a vitamin b12 or a folic acid deficiency which are required as coenzyme for thymidine and purine synthesis am i right yes now the folic acid and b12 is not available so the dna synthesis is retarded very very important rna synthesis is unaffected cytoplasmic synthesis goes on that is the uh, that is the reason for the megaloblastosis cytoplasm only increase in size so yes fine so the dna related activity will be slowed down cell keeps on enlarging megaloblast will be larger than the normal blast all dividing cells will be affected the patient will have glossitis intestinal villi flattening and megaloblastosis in the bone marrow granulopoiesis and thrombopoiesis will be also affected there will be since these are immature cells they will undergo intramedullary death that is one of the reason for manifestation of what hemolytic uh, what to say features in megaloblastic anemia then ineffective hemopoiesis erythropoiesis granulopoiesis and thrombopoiesis and finally the patient will have pancytopenia very very important point what is pancytopenia anemia leukopenia and thrombocytopenia so in iron deficiency anemia only rbcs were decreased whereas in case of megaloblastic anemia it is actually a disease of the bone marrow all cell lineages will be affected so that is the reason for pancytopenia remember remember pancytopenia the most common cause of i can say it is of course megaloblastic anemia it is very common okay megaloblastic anemia pancytopenia is very common in all most i can say like 90 to 95 percentage of megaloblastic uh, sorry megaloblastic anemia will have pancytopenia i hope you understand why there is pancytopenia yes because the dna synthesis affects not only the erythropoiesis lineage but also granulopoiesis and thrombopoiesis fine coming into clinical features the pallor pallor is a non specific finding but still it is a gradual and progressive pallor the patient if it is severely pallor the patient will have fatigability tachycardia and all i told you know because of the hemolysis because of the intramedullary death of the immature rbc precursors which is responsible for the hemolytic features what is the hemolytic features the rbcs undergo destruction either in the periphery or within the circulation that is we have intravascular hemolysis and extravascular hemolysis so in both of these cases what will happen the rbcs undergo destruction rbc is undergo destruction the heme will be released from the heme we will be getting bilirubin the patient will present with the icterus or jaundice alloy discoloration of skin and mucous membrane okay yes then beefy red tongue then after stomatitis and remember in vitamin b12 deficiency but not in folic acid deficiency only in vitamin b12 deficiency there will be neurological manifestation the patient will have loss of position sense okay then gait disturbances psychiatric disturbances okay very very important and this is mainly because of subacute combined demyelination of the dorsal column of the spinal cord i told you, you know this uh, myelination of the nerve fiber is one of the most important function of vitamin b12 but not vitamin b9 okay and this neurological dysfunction has been what uh, very rarely observed in folic acid deficiency okay yes so the most of the patient will characteristically complain of symmetric bilateral numbness of the proximities fine and uh, yes so this is because of degeneration or demyelination of the peripheral nerves fine yes and another important thing i told you this vitamin b12 acts as a cofactor in homocysteine to methionine formation since vitamin b12 is deficient homocysteine can't be converted into methionine this will leads to hyperhomocysteinemia okay yes remember it is reversible with the therapy then folate deficiency is associated with the neural tube defects in pregnant ladies okay yes so the baby is born to a pregnant female who is having folate deficiency will have very high risk of getting neural tube defects fine yes okay now let us see in, now let now let us see about the hematological manifestations of vitamin b12 and folic acid deficiency okay yes number 1 mcv mean corpuscular volume increase that is why it is called as a macrocytic anemia okay yes remember we have microcytic hypochromic but i am not saying it is macrocytic hyperchromic no it is what to say the mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration it is always in the normal range so please don't write hyperchromic there is nothing called as hyperchromic because we have a red blood cell indices called as mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration we have two components one is mch other one is mchc mch is mean corpuscular hemoglobin mchc is mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration because of this mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration rbc itself have an inbuilt mechanism to prevent the unnecessary accumulation of the hemoglobin that is why we don't have an entity called as hyperchromic 
anemia except few others few others has mentioned that in hereditary spherocytosis we will have a hyperchromic that is uh, what to say uh, yes mchc is increased that is the only one case only one condition we will have an increased mchc in megaloblastic anemia we have MCHC in the normal range. Remember, red cell distribution width is again here increased. What does that increase? I told you that red cell distribution width is an indirect indicator of, it's a laboratory parameter which indicates, which tells us about the severity of anisopoiclocytosis. Fine? Yes. Okay. So, reticulocyte count is decreased. We will have thrombocytopenia, leukopenia. Okay, so we will have metamyelocyte, all the immature precursors of RBCs, WBCs and platelets will be found. Okay, yes, and the patient will have pancytopenia. See, very, very important question. The most commonest cause of pancytopenia in India is megaloblastic anemia. So, MCV, MCH and the red cell distribution width are increased, whereas, whereas MCHC is normal. This is a potential MCQ question. Okay, which of the following remains normal or which of the following is not increased? The answer is MCHC remains normal. Then peripheral smear shows two characteristic features. These are the two features you first write. You have to write first. So, or I can say if these two features are present in a peripheral smear, I can confirm my diagnosis. The patient is having megaloblastic anemia. Number one is called nuclear nuclear hypersegmentation of neutrophils. Okay, so I will show the pictures of all these things. You can see, you can see anisopoiclocytosis. Anisopoiclocytosis is the cells are of small various shapes and sizes, various shapes and sizes. Okay, that is a picture A. And picture B is nothing else but hypersegmented neutrophils. You can see, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The neutrophils is having 7 lobe the nucleus. Am I right? The C is also like that. Then what is this dot? Yes, RBC having a what is that pinkish purplish dot? What is this called as? Hovel jolly bodies. Actually, what are these dots? They are nuclear remnants. See, what is this many dot like structure? Yes, yesterday itself I have told you in the video. Yes, what is it? Very good. It is punctate basophilia or basophilic stippling. What are the two conditions? One is megaloblastic anemia, another one is lead poisoning. See, what is this eight figure of eight appearance? Cabot ring. I told you cabot ring is usually found as an artifact in peripheral smear, but it is also seen in megaloblastic anemia. Okay, yes. And at the last, you can see basophilic red cells. Okay, you can see basophilic red cells. It indicates dyserythropoiesis. Dyserythropoiesis or defective or ineffective erythropoiesis. Fine? Yes. I told you, you know, what are the features of dyserythropoiesis? You will have nuclear budding, nuclear fusion, nuclear bridging. All those are the features of dyserythropoiesis. Okay, so when you say that it's a hypersegmented, hypersegmented means you have the neutrophils have 6 to 10 nuclear segments and it should be more than 5 percentage. That means more, suppose I have 100 neutrophils. Out of that 100 neutrophils, at least 5 should have 6 to 10 hyperlobed nucleus. That is the meaning. Then what is the second <coughs> hallmark feature macro ovelocyte again yesterday that what is that in abnormalities of the uh, peripheral smear i have told you that macro ovelocyte are pathognomonic of megaloblastic anemia then we will have hovel jolly body basophilic stickling okay yes then in red cells demo demonstrate basophilia. Basophilic red cells indicate dyserythropoiesis. I am not going to repeat what is how and jolly bodies, what are cabot rings, everything I have already discussed. Yes, I told you that even, even, so, you know, this uh, megaloblastic anemia will have some a picture of like, what to say, hemolytic anemia. So we can see fragmented red cells. What are the other name of fragmented red cells called as helmet cells of schistocyte. Mean corpuscular volume is increased. We can see megaloblastoid changes. Am I right? Yes. Then coming to bone marrow finding, the characteristic bone marrow finding is megaloblastosis. Then hypercellular bone marrow. What is that? Hypercellular bone marrow. Okay. You will have erythroid hyperplasia and we will have reversal of myeloid erythroid ratio to 1 is to 8. Okay. But reversal of my myeloid erythroid ratio. That means normally the myeloid component is more. Whereas in case of megaloblastic anemia, the erythroid components are more. So the ratio become 1 is to 8. Okay. And the hallmark in bone marrow is we can see the nuclear cytoplasmic maturation, okay, dissociation, uh, we can see a lot of erythroid precursors, that is all megaloblastosis, megaloblastosis, see, all this is the peripheral uh, smear, you can see, you know, erythroid hyperplasia, see, these are all erythroid, erythroid series, am I right, erythroid precursors, erythroid precursors, hmm? yes, see, all these are megaloblast, megaloblast, fine, yes, 
basophilic cytoplasm all these are megaloblast basophilic cytoplasm i hope this is clear for you yes fine then what are the other uh, bone marrow features you can see you can see this erythropoiesis what are the features of this erythropoiesis you can see here nuclear bridging nuclear fusion yes nuclear bridging nuclear fusion you can see punctate basophilia you can see hovel jolly bodies okay cabot ring fine yes all these are again features of this erythropoiesis you can also mention the features of this erythropoiesis in the bone marrow findings the most important thing the most important point you have to remember is megaloblastosis megaloblastosis you can see giant metamyelocyte the band forms okay then you can also see what to say yes mega thrombocytes am i right or mega karyocytes which are the precursors for the platelets that are also seen in case of bone marrow all these have a distorted shape they will have bizarre shapes of the nuclei abnormal chromatin and staining character fine yes see bone marrow trophy biopsy which shows again erythroid hyperplasia okay see and what they have focused is immature wbcs yes giant band forms and giant metamyelocyte you can see nuclear bridging fusion okay this is this leukopoiesis irregularity of nuclear shape and uh, with abnormal staining character fine yes again see all this picture shows basophilic basophilic uh, chromatin fine yes yes remember remember unlike unlike iron deficiency anemia unlike iron deficiency anemia where the bone marrow iron stores are completely depleted in megaloblastic anemia there will be increased iron stores okay you may can you can also see hemosiderin deposits what is the name of the stain pearls prussian blue reaction fine so what are the investigations you can go for vitamin b12 as a cobalamin as a hyperhomocysteinemia which is an indirect indicator then you can go for gastric biopsy to see any pernicious anemia okay <coughs> and remember the serum ldh levels are extremely high because of the intramedullary destruction of the megaloblast okay all these are the other laboratory parameters then methyl malonic aciduria methyl malonic aciduria will be also high fine yes then fig glue fig glue in urine serum bilirubin will be increased fine what are the differential diagnosis differential diagnosis means non megaloblastic macrocytosis that means there is no vitamin b12 or folate deficiency when i look the bone marrow everything is normal there is no megaloblast but when i look the peripheral smear the rbc is macrocyte what is that what are the condition number 1 liver disease number 2 acute leukemia number 3 myelodysplastic syndrome number 4 aplastic anemia hypothyroidism excessive alcohol intake following cytotoxic drug therapy and anti convulsant drug pure red cell aplasia reticulocytosis in hemolytic anemia out of that i will ask you to remember liver disease hypothyroidism excessive alcohol disease then myelodysplastic syndrome anti convulsant drugs so these are the important differential diagnosis you have to write for <coughs> macrocytic anemia with no megaloblastosis in the bone marrow and remember there is no vitamin b12 or folate deficiency so these are the differential diagnosis how will you treat megaloblastic anemia folic acid and vitamin b12 supplementation fine yes so i hope that i hope that at the end of this at the end of this you are able to find the answer for all these question differential diagnosis bone marrow aspiration finding peripheral smear finding two important findings what are they hypersegmented neutrophil second one is macroovulocyte when you say that hypersegmented neutrophil 6 to 10 nuclear lobes lobes of nuclei should be present in more than 5% of the neutrophils in the peripheral smear then pathogenesis okay then bone marrow aspiration finding megaloblastosis dyserythropoiesis and uh, the bone marrow iron stores are increased differential diagnosis liver disease chronic alcoholism hypothyroidism uh, myelodysplastic syndrome acute leukemia and the convulsant drug therapy so with this with this we have come to the end of the session thank you